In this video, we're going to look at six new identities. I've written them in a condensed format. So I've written the sine, cosine, and tangent as both the plus and minus. So basically what I've done and I've shown is I've written this as if I have sine of alpha plus beta, so I have two separate variables, I cannot distribute. Number one mistake I see. So I'm going to say it again. I cannot distribute a trig function. But what I can do is I can expand this and say if I'm adding two quantities, then I can say that becomes the sine of alpha cosine of beta. Since the plus comes first here, the plus comes first here, cosine of alpha sine of beta. If I had been subtracting those two variables, I would use the same formula but with a subtraction sign in between. With cosine, when I'm adding them, I subtract. So first goes with first. When I'm subtracting those variables, I add these two expressions. With tangent, when I start with adding, I go ahead and I add these two terms on top and I subtract these two terms on the bottom. When I start, when I have subtraction here between my two variables, I subtract on top and add on the bottom. If that's confusing, please copy down on page 337 each of the individual formulas instead of using my condensed formula set here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use these in this video to find an exact value of a, of a value that is not on my unit circle. So traditionally when I find the value of something not on the unit circle, I use my calculator and I get some crazy decimal. We know that when we're talking or trying to find the exact value, we don't want the decimal. So I'm going to go ahead and look at example one and I see that I'm asked to find sine of 15 degrees, which is not on my unit circle. However, I know that 45 minus 30 equals 15 and both 45 and 30 are on my unit circle. So I can go ahead and I can say that sine of 15 degrees is equal to sine of 45 degrees minus 30 degrees. I cannot distribute the sine, but I can follow this formula here. 45 is in my alpha position, 30 is in my beta position, so that becomes sine of 45 cosine of 30 minus cosine of 45 sine of 30. And now I can pick each of these values off of my unit circle. I get square root of 2 over 2 for sine of 45, square root of 3 over 2 for cosine of 30, square root of 2 over 2 for cosine of 45, and 1 half for sine of 30, giving me radical 6 over 4 minus radical 2 over 4. Since I have a common denominator, I can say that's radical 6 minus radical 2. Do not combine those, those are not like terms all over 4. I do want to point out that I have many options. I said 45 minus 30. Notice I also could have said 60 minus 45 equals 15. 60 and 45 are both on my unit circle. I could have said 135 minus 120 equals 15. Both 135 and 120 are on my unit circle. So there are going to be on these problems many options. Um, let's go ahead and look at the next example where we're dealing with radians. Radians are more difficult than degrees. So I need to figure out, because 7 pi over 12 is not in my unit circle, I need to figure out either two quantities that add or two quantities that subtract to 7 pi over 12. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say what would add to be 7 pi, and I'm not even going to worry about the unit circle yet. Well, 5 pi over 12 plus 2 pi over 12 would add to be 7 pi over 12. So now I'm going to ask myself, when I reduce these, do I have values on my unit circle? Well, 5 pi over 12 doesn't reduce. Pi, 2 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 6. So notice I found two things that add together to be 7 pi over 12, but only one of those two things is truly from my unit circle. So I'm going to go back and try again. How about 3 pi over 12 plus 4 pi over 12? Those add to be 7 pi over 12. So now I'm going to check. What do those reduce to? Do they reduce to things that are on my unit circle? Well, that becomes pi over 4 plus pi over 3. Those are both on my unit circle, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite tangent of 7 pi over 12 as tangent of pi over 4 plus pi over 3. And then use this identity here to expand that. It becomes tangent, so I'm going to add on top, so when I'm adding, I'm going to add on top and subtract on the bottom. Tangent of pi over 4 plus tangent of pi over 3 all over 1 minus tangent of pi over 4 
times tangent of pi over 3. And again, I now just take those values from my unit circle. Of course, with tangent, I have to do a little more work. I have to do the sine value divided by the cosine value. And when I do that, for tangent of pi over 4, I get 1. For tangent of pi over 3, I get square root of 3. And on the bottom, I then get 1 minus 1 times the square root of 3. I cannot reduce with add or subtract, so this is going to be my simplest answer. If you're unsure of where I'm getting that radical 3, I'm taking my tangent, or excuse me, my sine value and dividing by my cosine value at pi over 3. If you want me to go over that more in depth in class, please let me know and I will. It is something we studied in the previous unit. Moving on to the final two examples, I have another example with cosine and another example with sine or a example with cosine. So cosine is 75 degrees. So let's see, I know that 30 plus 45 equals 75. So I'm going to go ahead and say that cosine of 45, 75 degrees is the same thing as cosine of 30 plus 45. So then I go ahead and I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to use this formula here, my cosine. So I notice that when I'm adding, I'm actually going to subtract so I am going to end up with cosine of 30 times cosine of 45 minus sine of 30 times sine of 45. Again, I just go to my unit circle and I see cosine of 30 is radical 3 over 2 times cosine of 45, which is radical 2 over 2 minus sine of 30, which is 1 half, times sine of 45, which is radical 2 over 2, giving me radical 6 over 4 minus radical 2 over 4. Again, they have a common denominator, so I can go ahead and write them both over that same common denominator, but because the radicals are different, I cannot combine them. They are not like terms. And now let's go ahead and look at one final example where we have sine, again, another radians of 5 pi over 12. So again, I'm going to go ahead and ask myself, what adds or subtracts to be 5 pi? And um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to say, I know that 2 pi over 12 plus 3 pi over 12 would add up to be 5 pi over 12 since 2 and 3. So I'm just going to take that. And now I'm going to reduce to find out if that's really going to work, if they really are from my unit circle, if I have to try again. Well, 2 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 6. 3 pi over 12 reduces to pi over 4. So sine of 5 pi over 12 becomes sine of pi over 6 plus pi over 4. And notice up here from my formulas, I'm once again going to use this first one here. And I'm going to go ahead and take sine alpha, sine beta, plus cosine alpha, cosine beta. Giving me sine of pi over 6 times cosine of pi over 4 plus cosine of pi over 6 times sine of pi over 4. And then once again, I go to my unit circle. And I get sine of pi over 6 is 1 half, cosine of pi over 4, radical 2 over 2, pi over, cosine of pi over 6, radical 3 over 2, and sine of pi over 4, radical 2 over 2, giving me radical 2 over 4 plus radical 6 over 4, which is radical 2 plus radical 6 all over 4. You're going to see values reappear because if you notice on the unit circle, there's not a lot of variety on it. We do have very similar points, we reuse values a lot, so that's why you kind of see that there's some similarities between each of my answers. So just to summarize before I end this video, these are going to be my sum and difference identities condensed. Again, if you don't like the way they're written, please look at page 337 and see how you can write down each one individually. But if you have any questions on this video, please bring them with you to class so we can discuss them together.